James Lutton for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to join with Stephen Fulton Jr. Call cool boy Steph, how are you doing? I'm fine, and yourself? I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for joining me today. Um, let's talk a little bit about, first of all, your, your next fight. Uh, August 1st, I believe it's going to be. Um, new world title, potentially for yourself, WBO title, Angelo Leo. Um, first of all, talk to me about your opponent. What do you know of him? And what threat does he pose, if any? I mean, I don't know that much about him, but I don't believe there's a threat. You know, I watched some tape, but, you know, you don't, you can't always expect the same fighter to show up. Styles make fights, you know. He won't fight me the same as maybe he fought those other guys. He will be the, I believe, the eighth undefeated opponent you faced. Now, it's something we don't see a lot this day and age in, in the sport. It's a very old school mentality. Does it put any more pressure on you to fight an undefeated fighter? No, no pressure at all. You know, I've done it seven times already. It's the eighth, and it, it, it became normal to me. You know, I started to crave undefeated fighters. It became normal. And I feel like the more top tier competition I fight, it becomes easier and easier, and I become accustomed to that rather than me fighting no name opponents or opponents that I know I can easily get over. Then me facing a, a top tier opponent like myself, which he is doing, and you don't know what to expect out of him. Now, a lot of people feel like to bring the best out in themselves, they've got to fight the best or undefeated fighters and things like that. Do you feel the same way? Is that why you maybe look at undefeated opponents? Uh, first, I believe it was just to test me, you know, to see what could I hang in there in the sport. But then after a while, once I kept doing it, I believe it was, it was pretty much that. <laughs> and obviously, the title was vacated very recently by Navarrete. How pleased are you that the fight will now have this title at stake as well? Oh, no, no, that's that's this what I this gave me the extra push 10 times mentally, though. The work was already put in, the work was already put in, so it gave me that 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 10 that that mental push that I needed the extra in this. So that was like the best thing that could have happened to me, absolutely. Now, you you did previously hold the RBO Super Bantamweight World Title, obviously, now fighting for the WBO World Title there in the same division. Talk to me a little bit about before you turned pro. How did you get into boxing? You're from Philadelphia, you know, a, a major boxing city. How big is boxing in Philly? Oh, it's, it's real big. You know, we have a lot of gyms in Philadelphia, you know, and it, it honestly keeps guys like me out of the streets and changes our lives. So it's pretty big in Philadelphia. Obviously, there's the names from Philadelphia throughout history, you know, Bernard Hopkins, Joe Fraser. And coming through now, you know, Danny Garcia yourself coming through, Sonny Conte coming through. It seems to be very much a the main sport in Philadelphia. Is that right? Or is it is it bigger than baseball, football, things like that over there? Uh it's getting there, you know. This is this is still a lonely sport. So we have it's, it's kind of hard to get the support. You know, they don't have that many fights in Philadelphia, but we have a lot of gems. That don't make sense to me. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's it's definitely getting there. But besides, like you know, Danny Garcia and you know Sonny and guys like that that you name, we also have Ted Farmer, Julian Williams, Jerron Boots, and it's myself. We have a lot of other guys that's, that's coming up as well. So it seems like the list is endless for the Philadelphia fighters over there, and as you mentioned, all brilliant talents too. Now, in terms of the, I know yourself, you're fighting for the title, but you want unifications. You're hungry for all the titles. Let's talk about the other holders for a moment there. So um, let's start WBA. Figueroa, I know there's a little bit of uh, potential fight that's going to be there. Then it's sort of not. What's the situation with Brandon Figueroa and yourself? Uh, I don't know. He don't want to fight. So I don't really like talking about that guy. You know, once he got the belt, he just wanted to go a whole different direction. And then he got exposed his last fight. So that shows what I would have done to him. And it shows that his can't really want to protect him as as of right now. But when we mention the WBA, I would like to mention MJ. You know, he's the gold. He has the gold, the WBA gold. So, is that, is that who you would be targeting for a unification belt? Honestly, no. Ray Vargas would be the first since he's on PBC side. <laughs> then MJ. So, the, so we can see who who would be the first undisputed super randomly champ of the world in history ever. That's it. Ray Vargas, like you say, is over there. He's WBC champion. How much easier does it make the fight to be made being under the same umbrella? 
It's very easy. It's very easy. It's just all up to his camp if they want to do it or not. It's very easy. And I believe that with a lot of, you know, whether it's top rank, uh, the zone or anywhere else, it's all about money for these guys. So just make it make sense for them and it, any fight can get done. If it doesn't get done, does that show a certain side to Ray Vargas and his team that they are avoiding you? Yes, it shows a flaw in his game, his style, him as a person and the team and, and the direction and who they want to face, whether they want to be great or not. It shows a flaw. Let's talk about, you mentioned your previous fight, Arnold Kigai. Um, talk me through that. Obviously, you won that on the points. How did the fight go for yourself? Did you always feel in control? I felt in control of the whole fight. You know, I feel like I, I could have thrown more punches, could have did more. You know, I could have honestly stopped from that. I, you know, look back and think of it. Uh, that was my fault, and I trusted in my abilities a little bit back then. But, yeah, and I believe if Arnold was the fight. A lot of these guys, like Leo, Angelo Leo, and him, he would he would beat them. He would beat any of these guys. Yeah, I feel like he was his hardest fight, the toughest one, not the hardest, but the toughest one. You mentioned you didn't believe in yourself during the fight to go and stop him. What was that? What was the mental block there? It wasn't that I didn't believe in myself. It's just that I, didn't, I wasn't taking enough risks. You know, you know how as if you were hesitant, holding back a little bit. Didn't want to take a risk, you know. I, I was playing it safe, kind of, but I wouldn't be doing that this time. Is that because you felt so in control that you could almost... Exactly. I was, I was always in control. And you mentioned he's your toughest opponent. Why was he your toughest opponent compared to previous opponents? What made him stand out to you? I feel as though he, he didn't want to lose. And I knew he didn't want to lose at all. You know, other guys, nobody wants to lose. But mentally, it took him a while to break. And I and I seen that while I was in that ring with him. It took him a while from, from the break. He tried to use dirty tactics to get me out of my, uh, get me out of my fight game and everything. So I knew that he was coming to fight. I knew it was going to be a rough, rugged fighter. So that's pretty much why it was the t- one of the toughest. No one, no other opponent gave me a run for my money like that. <laughs> I mentioned it's going to be Angelo Leo. Um, I believe it is August the 1st, isn't it? The yeah. fight date for that. Um, he's 19 and 0. What are his pros and cons that you've seen so far? Well, I can't really talk about the cons. You know, I don't want him to try to switch up anything. And if he does, we will adjust. But the, the, the pros of it is, it is really ain't no pros. <laughs> no, he, he, he tries to move a lot, you know. He, he quote unquote has power. Uh, he he likes to he favor his he favor his 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 hook a lot and his hook downstairs to the body. That about that about it. You said about uh, he favors a nice he favors a nice overhand right sometimes. That's that's about it. You say um if you gave away the game plan as such and his cons that you would have adjusted. Now you've said in previous interviews before with Ray Flores that you feel you're very good at adapting and quick thinking in the ring. What gives you that ability? Do you, is it something that you work on? Is it something that you just naturally have? It's something that uh, you naturally have. You can I don't believe you can work on those type things. You know, everyone naturally has something that they're good at, and that's one of the things. My mental, I'm, I'm a mentally tough person, mentally smart. I always try to be intelligent and think before I do and before I act. So while I'm in the ring, I'm always thinking and I'm always analyzing the the, the human body while I'm in there. You say you're mentally tough. Why is it? Is that is this something that's been happened to yourself in your lifetime, um, in your upbringing that's made you have that mental toughness? Yes, it's just the way I grew up. You know, it, it was kind of a little different for me, so I had to adapt. And I was used to being uncomfortable and put in uncomfortable situations. And you, you know, you have to be mentally tough to deal with and be uncomfortable in, in places that you may not want to be. You know, I had to step out of my comfort zone a lot, and to this day, I still do that. One other guy I wanted to mention to yourself, another name. Um, he is lower down in the rankings than yourself. I believe he's ranked 10th or 13th, I believe. Um, Ra'i Salim, he called you out earlier this year as well. Um, Ra'i Salim. Trains with Bones Adams. And I'm, listen, I swear to God, I'm not trying to be funny enough. I don't know who <laughs> it is. I don't know who that is. I swear I don't. And maybe if I see him, I probably know him, but I don't know the name. I don't know the name. What what do you take from these call outs? You know, obviously you've got you've got yourself into 
a very good position, obviously fighting for the world title now. A call out, something that's going to come naturally with your ranking, or is it something that you feel you know these guys weren't calling out beforehand because of your talent? I feel like they just call it because they they want a shot, they want to get bigger, you know. By me even fighting Angel Leo, this is his biggest fight. It's the most he's probably ever been talked about in boxing. And it's because of a guy like me. That's just what I bring to the table. I bring excitement. I bring the people. I bring the, the, the action-packed fights. I bring everything to the table. And I feel like guys know that I'm a big name now, and I'm one of the top guys, and I've made a name for myself going taking a different route by beating undefeated. You know, you have guys like Floyd that took the route of, of going to the Olympics and, you know, trash talking and, becoming the, the villain, even though he was always the good guy. Same as Adrian Broner. We all have different styles and different things that attract to us. I have the, the beating undefeated fighters thing. And I feel like a lot of guys want to do that now. And they want to try to face me to say, oh, I beat Stephen Fulton. Or just to get that early shot at that title. So that's that could be one thing they call me out for. But other than that, they don't really want to fight me. What's that like as a fighter to be called out just because of your ranking? Do you feel... That's an accomplishment. <laughs> it's an accomplishment. You know, it lets me know I'm the top guy. It lets me know I'm the big dog. Talk to me a bit about, obviously, the global pandemic, everyone's in lockdown, and obviously you've now got a world title coming up at, you know, in a few weeks' time. What's it like for yourself to try and train? Have you been able to train properly? Uh, yes, I've been able to train. Uh, I've, I, have, I had a gym to myself. Uh, July, before that, you know, it was a little up and down, you know, so, but other than that, the pandemic changed my mindset, my mind concept, me as a fighter, I've been through a lot more difficult things in my life, family problems, relationship problems, street problems, not boxing related, boxing wasn't there for me at the time, so it lets me know that all this could be taken just like this, away from me, that's what the pandemic did to me, and I believe that changed my mindset, changed the way I, I would fight. From here on out, I believe there's no need for waiting. After I do win this belt, I want a unification about things like that. It can all be taken just with a snap of a finger, and that's what the pandemic showed. What's the, what's the change in mentality? Is it going to change your style? Is it just changing your approach? What, what is the change that you've had during the pandemic? It changed my approach, my, the, my way of thinking. My style is more rugged, more dirty now. It's just, let's fight. There's no need to box all the time. I box, I've listened to my my corner. Y'all seen the boxing side of me. I think it's time for y'all to see another side of me. With the, well, I said the pandemic and the lockdown, since it's come back with top rank over there, we've seen a few um, upsets, let's say. Um, so I call them the lockdown upsets. Does that make Leo more a threat to you because there have been a few upsets or... As long as you stick to your game plan, as soon as you've been, you've been training properly yourself, you know you trust in your ability. No, that don't change anything. I don't really care for the upsets. It just makes me go harder. And honestly, any anything can happen. It only takes one point. So any any it can happen to anyone. Upsets are bound to happen, but I don't look forward to those. I don't I just focus on the main task. You know, I don't want to put that negative thought in in my head or keep that in the back of my head. No. No way. You know, I can think about it here and there. It's normal to think about it, but you don't want to keep dwelling on that. I don't really care about that. And obviously with the lockdown, we've lost five months of the boxing calendar. You lost 14, I believe, January. How many times realistically do you feel you'll be back in the ring this year? Probably once or twice. Hopefully twice. And what's the plan? Let's say we come back here, revisit in 12 months' time. Where do you want to be in 12 months? How many titles around your waist in 12 months' time? Undisputed. All of them. Simple as that. But within I the really like the IBO and the Ring Magazine. I want all of them. I don't think no one has had the WBA, WBO, IBF, WBC, IBO, and Ring Magazine. I want all of them. We should best and I know them. I can get it done. <laughs> within 12 months? Yes. Yeah, 12 months. All it is is get past this fight, win the WBO. Uh, set up another fight with me and Ray Vargas uni to, for unification about between, uh, let's see, November, December. Me and MJ, what's up? There's no need to wait. Let's make the money. It's right there.
the IBO would be the IBO in the ring magazine is vacant, so they will, of course can put those two into it. And they, they, there you go, right there. In less than twelve months, if this is all of the people who not to play games and you know want to play the babysitting game, we ain't getting no younger. The pandemic already showed us everything could be taken away, like Thanos with a snap of a finger. So why put why wait? What you make? I mean, your thought process, and you you know you're clearly very hungry, and you want all of them without a shadow of doubt whereas some of the people will calculate and take not take risks and not gamble they'll take a certain route to get to the world titles and maybe just sit pretty with a title around the waist what's your thoughts on having that thought process as far as like people babysitting their titles brandon figueroa is the image that come up in my in my head hello i've got you back now yeah, Brandon Figueroa is the image that come up in my head. So I don't really, I'm not that person. <laughs> I don't really think too much on that. I don't. <laughs> Do you think that's a fight that would happen to you and Figueroa? Clearly, you don't like the guy. You don't like his. No, know. it ain't that I don't like him. I just, not to cut you off, it ain't that I don't like him. I just don't like the business moves that they're doing, the way that how you tried to call me out early in my career and fight you in your hometown. And now, when we say, let's do it when it makes sense, make it big, bigger money for a belt and now it makes sense and you're scared you don't want to do it that's what it is i think that i don't like them do you think that's figaro or do you think that's his team i believe it's his team and a little bit of him you know we always play a part in it as well if i say no i want to fight him and my team say i don't think it's a good fight but if you want to take it we can take it we can we can i'm all in with you so with that being said if he was the one that said if his team said i don't like to fight for you but he says yeah i still want to fight him it can be done we're the, honestly, we're the bosses. And as you look at it, we're the one fighting. We're the boss. They work for us. We have to pay the trainers. Absolutely. Stephen, just very finally, give me a prediction. August the 1st, yourself, Angelio, what's going to happen? Um, I'm going to become the world champion. I'm going to become the world champion. And I don't think it will be going a distance. Honestly, I don't, I don't know when it will happen, but it will happen. Fantastic. We wish you all the best. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining me today and speaking to Pro Boxing fans. Thanks.